Hello and thanks for stopping by. I thought I would do a different type of video today. I went and built my own C64 joystick and I thought I would get the information out there. When I started the project, I couldn't find instructions on how to build one, but after some testing, I managed to get myself a working unit. To be clear, this is a USB C64 controller. This is not a Commodore 64 controller. This is for the modern C64 Mini or C64 full-size console. Now, before we get into this, please remember this is an electronics project. I know it's simple, but it is electronic and working with electricity can be dangerous, so be careful. I know we're talking low power here and it's just a USB peripheral, but still, don't mess with anything when it's plugged in. If you're not comfortable doing electrical projects, don't do it or get someone else to do it. This is an at-your-own-risk sort of project. You'll need some basics for this particular project. Clearly, you're going to need the joystick parts. You can buy kits online from eBay or Amazon. I think kits are probably the easiest way to go because they usually have all the pieces you need. The wires, the USB board, all the buttons, and a joystick. You can get a few different versions. I've seen two or three, I think. But overall, I'm pretty sure all the ones I've seen are fundamentally the same, and they probably will all work. You'll find all different types of colors and manufacturers as well, so go take a look and have fun picking out your colors. With the C64, there's a limit to what you actually will need from a kit. Usually the kits come with like a dozen buttons or so. In this particular project, you're going to need the USB board, you're going to need the joystick itself, and five buttons. There are seven buttons on the C64 controller, but I haven't mapped the left and right triangle buttons in the front of the actual joystick. I haven't needed them for a game so far, so I didn't bother. I suppose if I run into the need down the road, I'll probably make a modification. You'll also need some sort of a box, some sort of a, a container to put the joystick in. I've seen people make USB arcade sticks for PCs using all different shapes and sizes. Some people build them, some people buy actual cases that are designed for it, but I think making the box or repurposing something you already have is probably more fun, at least it is for me, and it's usually cheaper. I used a Star Wars branded tin for my controller. I think it was something I got as a gift, and I think it had cookie cutters in it or something like that. I don't know. All I know, it was sitting around the house for a long time, and I was staring at it, and I realized, well, I could probably use this for something else. That's this project. You're going to need to drill some holes, of course. For this particular build, you have one for the joystick and one for each of the remaining buttons. There should be four buttons and one for the fire button. When you're drilling holes, it's probably most important here. Use the right size drill bit. For me, I think I used a 15 sixteenths. That was the size of the button I was using. I suggest also practicing the drilling of the button layout on some sort of a junk piece of wood or even cardboard. You need something to test. You don't want to damage your final product, so you always want to do a test run. Also, use a drill press if you have one. It's much easier than a handheld, if you have one. You also need to pay attention to the button spacing. You're going to need enough space to install the buttons, okay? And you don't want to just guess. Don't guess. You'll get it wrong. The outside of the button will have a slight border, but there's also a coupling on the inside that you have to screw on the backside, and that's a little larger. So you need enough space not only on the outside, but on the inside, so when you're screwing the buttons down, they don't bump into the other buttons. You just need to make sure they all fit properly. If you dry fit them on a test piece, you'll know. Also, when you mount the joystick, for my project, it needed some firmness. I was using a tin, so I had to reinforce it with a piece of pegboard. Just a piece of scrap, and I glued it in place, and when it was all bolted together, it was plenty sturdy. So we have to drill a hole for the joystick and all the f in the fire button up front, and then you need the four buttons for the bottom C64 buttons. The four buttons for the C64 are those buttons that give you access to the functions of the system. I like to keep all the buttons in a row, the same way that they're lined up on the controller, but you could technically map them any way you want. So you got your box, you drill your holes, and you mount all your pieces in place. Personally, I hot glued the USB board in place, I just think that makes it easier. Also, for the sake of sanity, I marked my wires with flags to indicate the numbered buttons I was using. If you have to unplug these down the road for whatever reason, you need to know how you reattach them. In my testing, some of the input plugs actually worked in multiple ways, so I had a few false positives at first. I think it was the fire button could be utilized in a few different places, but it didn't have full functionality, something like that. Ultimately, I made a bunch of adjustments. And I've been testing it, and I've been playing games with this and using the carousel mode and the classic loader so far, so I think I have the mapping correct. There are two types of boards that I've seen for this particular type of project. One of the USB boards has plugs that have only two leads, and one has 
three leads. The boards are fundamentally the same with this one exception. The three-prong plug model has an LED lighting component built into each plug. The one with only two does not. It does have extra power plugs that you can use for LED lighting, but it's just orchestrated differently. I'm using a two-plug model for this controller. In my build, I could theoretically have connected all the LED sides of the buttons to the power plugs with extra wires and get everything to glow, but all I really cared about glowing was the fire button and the joystick, so I just plugged them into the board. On my board, plugs are actually red. That indicates there's 5 volts of power for the LEDs. You just plug in the buttons you want into these ports. So now, ignoring the LED plugs, you're going to have to plug everything in. The joystick I used has a simple plug that's really obvious. It's one type of plug, it's got a bigger shape, and it only goes in one spot on the board. So you plug it in. Now when you look at the back of the buttons, if you pick one up and look at it, my buttons have four prongs on them. If you look, one side is clearly elevated compared to the other side. The elevated side is the button side. That's what you plug into. The other side, the lower side, is the LED side. If your buttons have it and you want to utilize it, those are the, that's the side you'd use. Now for the buttons, there are 12 possibilities listed on the USB board that you could plug into. K1 through K12. But we only have five buttons we need to map for the controller. One fire button and four user buttons to operate the C64 specific functions. The fire button is the primary button and it goes to K8. Now the row of buttons beneath the joystick are at different mappings. The first button maps to K3. The second button maps to K2. The third button maps to K9, and the fourth button maps to K10. Plug everything in, then you just plug it into the C64. It works great, and it looks unique. It also has a very different feel compared to the C64 controller. It just, it feels different. It feels like an arcade, which might be good for certain games. You might not like it. You might like it for certain arcade styles. Up to you. Overall, it wasn't an expensive project. The kit for the joystick usually costs, uh, I want to say roughly $20 to $25, depending on the colors you choose. The box I had already, so that was free in my case, and I think I might have had to spend 8 bucks on the drill bit. Drill bit size is important. If you're trying to flim-flam it with a smaller bit and just sort of route it out, it's potentially not going to look that great, so you just want to be careful here. Well, that's all I have for the video. Thanks for giving this one a look, and I'll catch you next time.